DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware, makers of better things for better living through chemistry, presents The Cavalcade of America. Tonight's star, Robert Cummings. Tonight's story, Going Up. Going up. This elevator stops at all floors. Going up. Tonight, we'd like to bring you the story of the man who made the words going up a part of America. It all started in the middle of the 1800s with a young man named Elisha Graves Otis. It was a bright, sunny day when Elisha arrived in Yonkers, New York, with his wife and family. Together, he and Betsy climbed the stairs to their new home. Maybe you'd better rest a moment, dear. No, Elisha. I wish you wouldn't treat me like an old lady. I'm only 27. <laughs> now, Betsy, you All know right, I'm you're... 28. <laughs> well, there's still one more flight. Ah. Oh, Betsy, it's got a wonderful living room. Why, well, you can see the river oh, and beyond... Oh, darling, I do wish you'd stop worrying until I see it. I know it's going to be just wonderful. All right. Well, here we are. We'll open the door. Now pick me up. What? Pick me up. Oh, now, Betsy, we've got children. What'll people think if I carry you across the threshold like a bride? I always want to be your bride, Elisha. Come on, pick me up. Oh, all right, then. <laughs> My, Mrs. Otis, you're putting on weight, aren't you? <laughs> That's a fine thing to say to your bride. Now carry me in. That's it. Betsy, you do like it, don't you? It's quite the most comfortable place I've ever been in. This is the living room. And I was here's talking the... about your arms. <laughs> you can put me down now, darling. Oh, now, Betsy, be serious. All right, where's the kitchen? Well, I I'm afraid it isn't very big. It'll do. It'll do just fine. Uh, Betsy, uh, this time things will be different. All my life I've been looking for a position like the one I've got now. We can put the couch near the window. Oh, and there's a great future in the bedstead making and business. Hi, boy. Betsy, you're not listening to me. Would you please listen? I'm listening. I'm listening, darling. Yes, but you don't believe me, do you? Elisha, I just don't want you to be disappointed again. But this time it's going to be different. Honey, why, these two rooms, we, we'll laugh at them in a couple of years. I can see myself now becoming Mr. Mays's indispensable man. I can see him coming to me and saying, Elisha, without you, this business would never have grown. And Betsy, I'll grow with it. No more wandering, no more drifting, no more temporary homes. Have I ever objected? Oh, Betsy, I don't know why you've put up with me so long. I'm very grateful, but I... I just don't know why you have. I do. Why? Because I love you so. Come in. Did you want to see me, Mr. Mays? Oh, oh just come in, come in. <laughs> uh, here, sit down. Here, here, have a cigar. A cigar? Yes, yes. Oh, th thank you, sir. Uh, well, light? No, 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 thanks, sir. I'll, uh, I'll just save it until later. Hey, Otis, that uh, reminds me, that lathe you invented, I, I was talking to some of the boys about it. Showed them what it did for our business, and they turned green. Green, Otis, positively green. Well, uh, business has been good, then. Oh, good. Oh, it's been phenomenal. And it's going to get better. Yes, sir. You know, that's what I like about you, Otis. You aren't just an inventor, a dreamer. You get a grasp on things. Uh, I like a man to get, who gets a grasp on things. <clears throat> here, here. Have a cigar. Oh, <laughs> thank you, sir. Uh, it reminds me, you know, we're expanding. Uh, you know that building at the foot of Vark Street? Uh, yes, sir. Well, I can get the whole thing for a song. It's perfect for what I need, except for one thing. What's that, sir? It's the hoist in the building. It's cumbersome, slow, and, and it's dangerous. I need it to haul lumber all the way up to the fourth floor, and the thing will never do. Uh, perhaps if I looked at it, sir... You're so... going to have to pay a man triple wages to ride the thing. Uh, maybe I can do something to make the hoist safe, sir. <laughs> Otis, you are a dreamer. <laughs> you will never be able to make a safe elevator. Just make it a little less dangerous. That's all we ask now. Uh, I might have to build a new one. Yeah. Well, you really think you can do it? 
Uh, yes, sir. All right, all right. I'll tell you what you do. Take off a few days. Think it out. And then let me know what you come up with. Fine. I- I'll be in touch with you, fine, sir. Fine, fine. Oh, I say, Otis. Uh, uh, yes, sir? I, uh, I hate to bother you, but uh, you don't happen to have an extra cigar, do you? <laughs> Anybody home? Elisha? What a beautiful day. Most beautiful day I've ever seen. It rained all afternoon. <laughs> I did. <laughs> now, supposing you wipe that Cheshire grin off your face and tell me what's on your mind. <laughs> my mind? There's nothing on my mind. Why? Something's happened. I know it has. Come on, tell me. Well, Mrs. Otis, I had a long conversation with Mr. Mays this afternoon. You did? Mm-hmm. Elisha, he said to me, Elisha, have a cigar. You didn't take it? Of course I took it. Well, you don't smoke. I know that. Elisha, don't keep me in suspense. <laughs> well, we talked about the lathe I invented. And what did he say? Uh, well, because of that lathe your husband invented, Mrs. Otis, our company is being forced to move to a much larger factory. Oh, darling, darling, that's wonderful. And of course, uh, there's one small little problem he wants me to solve. You see, there's a hoist in the building, but it's not safe. So I told Mr. Mays I'd invent a safe elevator for him right away. You what? Sure, it's quite simple, I think. And just when are you going to invent this hoist? Huh? Oh, oh, why, as soon as I can think the thing out. (laughs) A lot of problems, Betsy, a lot of problems. That's good. What do you mean, that's good? Well, for a minute, I thought you were going to invent it before dinner. (laughs) The main problem, Betsy, is the hoist rope. Gosh, it, it just won't stand the strain. Elisha, you've done nothing but eat and sleep hoist for three weeks. <sighs> yes, and I've read books. Betsy, don't forget, I've read almost a hundred books, and there isn't even an inkling as to the answer. It's past ten o'clock. Don't you think you could put out the candles so we could get some sleep? Hmm? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Sure. There. I can think in the dark. I do wish you'd try to get some sleep. I'll try. Good night, Betsy. No kiss? Hmm? Good night, Elisha. Betsy. Betsy, wake up. Uh, What's wrong, Elisha? Betsy, I've solved it. I've solved it. I've been working on the wrong angle. Now, supposing the cable wasn't the answer at all. Supposing I put a wagon spring in the side of the car to work the ratchets automatically when the cable snapped. Well, I just am afraid I don't understand what a ratchet is, dear. Oh, darling, it's very simple. I'll explain it to you. You see, a ratchet is a... Uh, a uh, when you, you take it... Uh, well, well, it's what I'm going to use to make the elevator safe. <laughs> I'll let lumber on, Fred. <laughs> Man, that elevator can handle three times that weight. How many months does it have to be in operation before you men realize Mr. Otis, that? Mr. Otis, I don't like to bother you, sir, but Mr. Mays wants to see you in his office. Oh, all right. I got to check with Mr. Mays, Fred. Be back in a minute. Come in. Ah, do you want to see me, Mr. Mays? Well, sit down, Otis. You look a little tired, sir. Yeah, I am tired. Uh, I was just inspecting the elevator, sir. It's, it's working much better than we'd even hoped. It's an amazing job, Otis. Frankly, I didn't believe that anyone could invent a hoist that would really be safe. (laughs) Well, thank you, sir. Otis, uh, I'm sure you know that business has fallen off. Oh, yes, sir, but uh, general conditions have been rather bad, sir. Yeah, you have a wonderful gift of understatement. Well, is the company in, in trouble, sir? I'm sure that you'll be able to find other employment. Other employment? I haven't told the others yet, Otis. You're the first. You, you mean you're laying me off, sir? I mean, uh, well, I'll cut my wages if it'll help you, sir. I appreciate the gesture, Otis, but I'm afraid it isn't just a matter of laying off. I've been forced against the wall. Just can't meet the notes. Overexpanded, I expect, but... Well, no matter the cause. The company is filing bankruptcy. Bankruptcy? Bankruptcy. Cleaned out, Otis. This may surprise you, but... Uh, well, I... I can't even offer you a cigar. Happy birthday to you. Norton, no, no, 
don't shout it. Sing it. But I thought you were supposed to say it loud. Oh, I wonder what's keeping your father. He should have been here an hour ago. All right, now, let, let's try it again. Hmm? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. That's it. Happy birthday, oh, that's so high. Dear, dear Papa. Happy birthday to you. Oh, what a voice. Mama, tell him to stop teasing me. Oh, shh. Shh, wait a minute. It's your father. Oh, here. Hold the cake, Norton. And remember, just as soon as he opens the door, we all sing together. Now. Happy, Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Elisha. You all right? Hmm? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry I'm late, dear. I, I was uh, Run walking off to bed, around. children. But I'm hungry. No, you get ready for bed, and I'll bring you your dinner. Help your brother, Charles. Oh, come along, Norton. Elisha. Yes, dear. I kept the boys up till now. It's your birthday. Darling, I've been... My birthday? Mm. Oh, I'm so sorry, Betsy. I forgot. That's all right. Where have you been? Oh, oh it, it was so nice out. I, I just walked around. I forgot all about the time. Come on, call the boys out. We'll have the party. Hmm? Elisha, I'm your wife. You can't fool me. I was afraid to come home, Betsy. You were afraid to come home to me? I was ashamed. Sit down, dear. <sighs> Tell me. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? We were right here in this same part of the room when I made my grand speech. All the things I was going to do for you and the children. <laughs> How proud I was going to make you of your husband. I am proud of you, Elisha. You won't be. Tell me. <sighs> well, Mr. Mays called me in to see him. But it wasn't to talk about the lathe or the elevator or anything like that. It was to tell me that the company is going bankrupt. Bankrupt? Oh, Elisha, I'm so sorry. Sorry? Oh, Betsy, do you realize what this means? I'm out of a job. We have no money. We have no future. No place to go. Betsy, accept my apologies for being such a poor provider. For being such a failure. You're tired, Elisha. Yes, I'm so tired. Oh, Betsy, what are we going to do? We have nothing, nothing. We have each other. Dear Betsy, dear unselfish Betsy, you give so much and I give so little. Listening to the Cavalcade of America, starring Robert Cummings with Judy Parrish, sponsored by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. And now, a word from Bill Hamilton. When you think of the uses of nylon in your home, you probably think of clothing, slip covers, draperies, and other fabrics woven from this DuPont made fiber. But DuPont nylon as a plastic contributes much to your daily living, too. Gears in your electric food mixers, the tiny connecting rod in an electric shaver, drapery slides, and in literally hundreds of other small mechanical parts. Every one of the better-known makes of household refrigerators has molded nylon parts. Every automobile made today has one or more nylon parts. As a fiber and as a plastic, nylon serves you well as one of DuPont's better things for better living through chemistry. Tonight on The Cavalcade of America, Robert Cummings is starring as Elisha Graves Otis with Judith Parrish as Betsy. With the Depression, Elisha Otis found himself without a job. For months, he walked the streets of New York, but no one was hiring. So finally, even though his heart wasn't in it, Elisha Graves Otis and family were again on the move. What do you want me to pack this, Betsy? Hello? Oh, put it in the trunk. We won't need it till we arrive. 
They say the weather in California is just marvelous. Outside of a little rain, it's just a parrot. You're not happy, are you? <laughs> does it show that much? I'm afraid it does. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I guess I feel I'm burying my dreams. <laughs> well, at least I'm going to bury them in a golden graveyard. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? You expecting someone? No, I said goodbye to everyone this morning. Yes? Uh, I'm looking for Otis. Uh, my name is Otis. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, well, uh, are you going to invite me in, or oh, aren't you? Of course, yes. Come in. Come in. Uh, thank you. My name is Newhouse. Benjamin Newhouse of New York. Well, how do you, uh, this is my wife. Uh, how do you do, ma'am? How do you do? Won't you sit down? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, uh, four flights. Uh, it's some climb for a man of my weight. <laughs> well, Mr. Newhouse, I'll tell you what I'll do. Next time you come to visit us, I'll have an elevator installed here for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's exactly why I call. Yes. Uh, uh, Mr. Rodas, I own a picture frame factory and cabinet shop in New York. Uh -huh. Six months ago, I had a very deplorable accident in my factory. The cable on my elevator broke, and two men were killed. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, sir, but I'm afraid I don't know what I can do about it. Uh, you can build me two elevators, uh, and not two ordinary elevators either. I want two of those Otis safety elevators. I'm sorry, Mr. Newhouse, but I'm not in the elevator business. In fact, I've never really been in the elevator business. Uh, why not? Oh, Mr. Newhouse, it's not that easy. It, it takes money to start a business like that. Uh, well, what do you think banks are for? I'll borrow it. You've already got one order. I can guarantee that. Any bank can see there's a future to a business like that. Uh, it's a sound investment, man. Say he's right, Betsy. I could do it. I know I could. Uh, of course you can. And I shall be happy to place the first order with the Otis Elevator Company. Ah, uh, 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 Mr. Newhouse, with the Otis Safety Elevator Company. Uh. <laughs> Champagne. Oh, don't you think you're being a little extravagant? Well, Mrs. Otis, it isn't often that I have the extreme pleasure of dining alone with my wife in New York's most famous restaurant. But the prices are so high. Oh, who cares about the prices? This is an occasion, Betsy. This afternoon, we finished the new house job. Well, I think I'd feel a lot happier if you had some more orders. <laughs> oh, they'll come, Betsy. They'll come faster than I can handle them. Just you wait and see. Why, within a year, we'll probably have to move to a bigger building. I hope so. Now, come on, drink up your champagne. Let's dance, hmm? Dance? <laughs> Why not? Because you don't know how to dance. No, well, I don't know how to smoke cigars either, but I never turn them down. <laughs> it should have been so easy. So very, very easy. Were you saying something, dear? What? Oh, no, I was just talking to myself. Mm. Uh, children in bed? Finally. Darling, you look worried. I am. Oh, Betsy, I'm tired of swimming against the tide. Nobody wants elevators. Nobody's interested in elevators, no matter how safe they are. All these months and not one single order. I don't understand it. You build the only safe elevator in the country. In the world. But outside of my family, it seems to be a well-kept secret. Elisha, if I thought that you'd lost faith... Faith? Betsy, I, I wish I could tell you about the things I dreamed. Big cities, buildings 15 stories high with towers that pierce the clouds. 15, did I say? Betsy, I picture buildings 20 stories high. A whole new world. But I just can't get anyone else to see it. Then it's up to you to make them see it. <laughs> it isn't that simple. Well, I didn't say it was going to be simple. I just said it's up to you to open their eyes. Think of something different. Well, I, d I don't know what, but, but something. Something? Something different? Well, you say people don't want elevators. Well, how can they, Elisha? Maybe they don't know about them. You know about them. Mr. Newhouse knows, but... Something different. Something so, so spectacular that the eyes of the world can be opened. I wish I could help you. But you have, darling, you have. Where's the evening paper? Uh, uh, I think you're sitting on it. Oh, so I am. Now, now, where did I see that article? No, now, it's not on page three. What are you muttering let's about? Ah, oh, here it is. Now, let's listen to this, Betsy. This summer at the Crystal Palace, New York City is going to be honored with the annual American Institute Fair. All the latest improvements in modern living and so forth and so on. I'm afraid I don't understand. Darling, there are going to be thousands and thousands of people there. Thousands upon thousands. And I'm going to do something to entertain them. Well, what? That's something different you suggested. 
I'm going to build an elevator 40 feet high right at the entrance of the fair. Yes. It should be quite a sight. Oh, it'll be the most amazing thing at the fair. People will come from all over the country, and when they leave the fair, they're going back with the name of Elisha Graves Otis on their lips. And do you know why? Because you built the elevator? Because I built the elevator. And because I'm going to ride that elevator to the top. And when I get to the top, I'll make them open their eyes. Programs to the fair here. Get your souvenir programs, folks. Know the locations of all the wonderful eye-opening exhibitions found on the Midway. Yes. You can't afford to be without one. Only ten cents. The old fun fallacy. Old fun. You're not going to do it, Elisha. You can't. I must, Betsy. We've had this out a thousand times. How, how else can I prove the elevator is safe? But to ride all the way up and then cut the cable. But it's safe. It's an Otis safety elevator. Betsy, you yourself said I had to do something different. Something that would make them sit up and take notice. Well, I didn't mean you should kill yourself. Well, it, it's two o'clock, Betsy. They're all waiting. I, I've got to do it. Please, please, Elisha, for my sake and the boys, please. Believe me, Betsy, I'm doing this for you and the boys. M maybe you'd better go over and sit on the bench there, hmm? Well, I won't be able to look. I won't. Oh, have faith, Betsy, please. In what? In me. Just have faith in me. No, no, I I've got to get over there. Ha have faith in me. Elisha! All right, folks, step right over this way. Step over this way for the most spectacular oh, feat of the fair. Mr. Otis and his elevator. Step over this way, folks. Over this way. There he is. That's Otis getting on the elevator. The program says he's going up four floors oh. and then cut the roof. I bet he doesn't ride it. It's a fake elevator. Well, nobody but a fool would go up four stories and take a drop. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, please, uh, may I have your attention? Uh, you have all heard it said that there is nothing new under the sun. <laughs> Well, I stand before you now in the car of an Otis safety elevator to disprove that statement. Now, uh, what happens today will prove to you that there can be a great and a new world ahead of us. A new world, ladies and gentlemen, where the cities of men will reach up to touch the clouds. <laughs> uh, all right, Fred, uh, pull me up. Oh, he's really going up. Will he actually Well, somebody ought to stop him. I am now at ten feet, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm still going up. Going up because that is the only direction that the future will take. I am now exactly twenty feet. Oh, no. Fred, uh, what you are about to see is the future shape before your very eyes. Higher, Fred. Higher. This is a suicide, I tell you. Suicide. I don't care what anybody says. That man has courage. He's just crazy. That's what I'm Ladies and gentlemen, I am now at 40 feet. 40 feet. At the top of this elevator. Four full stories above you. I am now about to try an experiment that will once and for all times prove what I've been telling you here today. Now, this is not just an ordinary elevator. It is a safe elevator. Remember that. And now... In exactly five seconds, I shall cut the cable. <laughs> there are women and children down here, Otis! They don't want to see a man kill himself. One, two, three, four, five, and I cut the cable. <laughs> Did you see that? It only dropped a foot and a half. Uh, congratulations, Miss Rodas. Oh, thank, you. thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Let, let me through to my wife, will you please? I always uh, knew you could do it, Mr. Rodas. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. Betsy. Oh, Elisha, you're safe. Oh, let me look at you. You're a brave man, Mr. Rodas. Oh, a very brave no man. No more dangerous than crossing the street or taking a bath. Elisha. Oh, darling, I'm sorry. Let me through here, please. I say, let me through, please. Thank you. Mr. Otis? Uh, yes, sir? Sir, I'd like to speak to you. Well, at your service, sir. My name is Cavanaugh. Charles Cavanaugh, Cavanaugh Mills Incorporated. I'm mighty interested in your elevator. Well, I thank you for your interest, Mr. Cavanaugh. Really safe, you say? Well, you saw it with your own eyes, sir. So I did. And I might say that, well, I'm more than just interested. I was wondering if I could call at your office, say, tomorrow morning uh, around 9. Well, I'll certainly be there. I've got five mills in Virginia. And I'd like one elevator installed in every mill. Five? Sir? That's right, five. Well, I'll see you at nine in the morning. 
Truly oh, really Elisha, crazy. your idea is a success already. An order for five elevators. Think of that. Think. Oh. Hey. <laughs> Elisha. Oh, people are looking at us. I know. Well, you're kissing me. Mm-hmm. And it's much more fun than riding an elevator. <laughs> Manhattan's skyline, Chicago's loop, San Francisco's towers. These are the monuments to the genius of Elisha Otis, whose engineering skill inspired the vertical cities of today. Now, thanks to Robert Cummings and the Cavalcade players for tonight's story, Going Up. Now, Bill Hamilton speaking for the DuPont Company. What happens when a large industry builds a plant in or near a small community? Is it good for everyone concerned? Well, in the case of Tawanda, Pennsylvania, we have one answer to that question. Tawanda used to be a farming town. Today, it has a DuPont plant making X-ray screens and television phosphors and another plant owned by Sylvania Electric Products. Local citizens will tell you what effect these plants have had on their town. Wesley Perry, automobile dealer, says, I started out in 1937 with six employees and a rented garage. Now I have 19 employees and a place of my own. My customers are both farmers and industrial workers. Leo Rockwell, who's built 16 houses in two years and plans to build more, says, Industry is purely the reason for it. My development is within walking distance of both the DuPont and the Sylvania plants. And then there's Bernard C. Wolf, president of the First National Bank. He adds, industry has raised the wage level all over town. I believe in the long run, almost everyone will have a higher living standard as a result. Well, now the DuPont plant in Tawanda is not large. It normally employs about 100 people. Even so, its payroll last year amounted to about $400,000. Over a 12-month period, $80,000 more went to local firms for goods and services. DuPont is happy to be in Tawanda, and the people in and around Tawanda seem to be happy with DuPont as a neighbor. This is the pattern of America's industrial future, with folks strolling home from work to bright gardens and nodding trees. And we are happy indeed to have helped to create such a future with our DuPont Better Things for Better Living through chemistry. Next week, the DuPont Cavalcade will present John Lund and Walter Hamden in An American from France. Be sure to listen. Tonight's DuPont Cavalcade was written by David Harmon. Original music was composed by Arden Cornwell, conducted by Donald Borries. The program was directed by John Zoller. In tonight's cast, you heard Robert Cummings, starring as Elisha Otis. Judith Parrish was featured as Betsy. Fred Irving Lewis was Mays, and Henry Calvin was Newhouse. Ladies and gentlemen, April has been designated as Cancer Control Month. Wholehearted public support is needed if more lives are to be saved. Send your contributions to the Cancer Fund. This is Cy Harris speaking. Don't forget next week, our stars, John Lund and Walter Hamden. The Cavalcade of America comes to you from the Velasco Theater in New York and is sponsored by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. Next, it's Barry Craig, confidential investigator on NBC.